Hello everybody, this is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm back for another day of Christie's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches, Series 7. And even though I've completed doing the 30 Days of Sketches, I didn't really love the layout that I made for day six initially. I had made a layout that had a really dark background and initially I was thinking, it doesn't really look like a layout that I would make. And eventually I grew to like it when I looked at it again, you know, a few days later, a week later. But right after I made it, I thought um, I wasn't happy with it. So I decided to make another layout using the day six sketch because I really liked the day six sketch. So here I am again, making a layout for this page map sketch. For this layout, I'm using the Pink Paisley Spring Jubilee collection. It's a really old collection, and I just love the colors in it. I love the pinks and the salmon and the blue. And here you can see there's a really bright yellow too. And I just love the way all those colors work together, and I love the way they just say spring. Initially, I was going to use this blue piece of paper as the background, and then I changed my mind, and I decided that I was going to mount my photo on it instead, and then I was going to do a mixed-media background. But I did want to make sure that I had that blue in the layout because I think that that blue is important to this combination of colors that's in this collection. I'm using some Distress Oxide and this Dauber to ink the edges of everything on the layout. I ink all the pattern papers that are on the layout. The photo is a photo of my younger daughter. We went to visit my older daughter in Rochester, New York. My older daughter used to go to school there. And Rochester is all the way up in northern New York, not too far from Canada. And although it's generally much colder up there than it is in my neck of the woods, it uh, was a really nice day the day that we went there. My daughter and her best friend used to go to a conservatory up there. So when we went to visit, they took us there and it was really beautiful inside. They had so many gorgeous plants. And one of the reasons that I chose this particular collection was because the leaves that are in the photo, there are uh, some up on the windowsill and there are also some in kind of the foreground. There are a lot of the colors that are in this collection. There's a salmonish color and a bright green color. And I just thought that this was a good combination with this photo. I do like to pull the colors from the photo and either match them or coordinate them with the collection when possible. I want to put a doily in the sketch. But I'm not sure which one I should use. So I had one that I had already sprayed. I had that in my stash. I didn't really like the way that looked. So now I'm just putting this plain white doily here. I cut out this section of pattern paper and I'm fussy cutting it out. I don't have any embellishments at all for this paper, so I am mainly relying on some fussy cut items as the uh, ephemera for the background. You could see here that I'm cutting out some other images. These are some little stamps. Most of the images that are on the pattern papers in this collection are really perfect for this particular subject because there are a lot of flowers and leaves and butterflies and birds. So I fussy cut out a lot of those items and you'll see those on the page in a little bit. For the cluster in the bottom right hand corner, I am using some strips of paper to make some banners. So I cut one out in blue. And you can see here I'm just putting a little fishtail at the end and layering all those fussy cut pieces back on top of them. In the sketch, you could see that there is a circular element on the bottom right. And I don't have anything that's clearly round, but there's a little bit of a circle showing through on part of this fussy cut piece. And I just decided to add the patterns in. I've generally been following along pretty closely with the sketches. And even though I've been following along closely, it's always necessary in my opinion to make some changes. So you can see here that I am inking all the edges, trying to keep that consistent. And now I am trying a different doily and I like that better. It's a little bit smaller and I, thought that that looked better with the size of the photograph and all the other elements I had picked out. I fussy cut out that green circle and I tucked that in there behind the photo. And now I am tracing around the outside of this large cluster and now I'm going to put some mixed media on the background. 
I think that everybody approaches mixed media backgrounds differently. For me, the first thing I think about is which colors do I want to put in the background, and I usually pick out about three different colors. I might have several shades of the same color, but I usually pick out three. I feel that any less, uh, sometimes it's not interesting enough to me, just to me, and any more than that, I feel that it gets a little bit too confusing, too many different colors in the background. But while I'm saying that, there have been definitely circumstances where I have just, just used one color or two colors or four colors, but I feel that that's kind of my starting point, and then if there's a reason, I might change it up a little bit. As I had mentioned, I really love these bright springy colors, and I just think that combination of the kind of turquoisey blue and the lime green and then uh, the pink that I'm going to introduce in a moment, I think it's just a beautiful, vibrant combination. The important thing, though, is that I don't want to make my background more exciting than my photo and the things that are directly near my photo. I want everything to be interesting, but I don't want the color to dominate the whole layout. So that's always a challenge for me because a lot of times the colors that I'm using, a lot of times I buy them because they're so vibrant and they're so beautiful. So it's definitely a, a balance. You know, you want your background to be beautiful. You want it to stand out. And at the same time, you don't want it to stand out too much because uh, then the photo kind of could get lost or all the other work that you've done can kind of get lost. You want everything to be interesting. So in the beginning, I don't worry about that. In the beginning, I just go in with my sprays and I create something in the background that I think is interesting. And I mentioned this on some of my videos, but I think I should always mention it, is that I do dry the colors in between. And you can see here that I showed a little bit of me drying, but I do a lot more drying than I show. Nobody wants to watch a video where somebody's drying their layout the whole time, but I do dry all the colors in between. The only time I won't dry in between is when there's two colors that I want them to run into each other, and that wasn't the case in this layout. So I do dry between the application of each color. Here I'm taking some water and I am dabbing it, I'm sorry, I'm sprinkling the water on the background and then I'm dabbing up the water that I've sprinkled with a paper towel. And that helps to lift some of the color off the background and that just creates a really cool effect in the areas of color. It just creates little like droplets and I love the way that looks. And then I'm adding some splatters as well. And I'm splattering the pink over the pink and the blue over the blue and the green over the green, but, but it's okay with me if the splatters land on the other colors as well. I didn't mention that I am using some 120 pound smooth white cardstock, which is my go-to for mixed media backgrounds. I've already coated it with some white gesso and I do really like the white gesso. The clear gesso, I do use that when I'm putting some mixed media on pattern paper, but I really don't like it as much as the white gesso. The clear gesso, if you've ever used it, you might have noticed that it's a little gritty, and that doesn't bother me, but it just doesn't seem to create the same barrier between the paper and the inks or sprays or whatever you're gonna be putting on top of it, and I just something about the white gesso that I prefer. So now I'm going in with a stencil. I bought this stencil at Tuesday morning in the good old days when I used to make regular trips to see what new things Tuesday morning had. And um, we don't really have those stores here anymore. We have one small one and it's kind of a sad thing for me. I really miss going there. In any case, this was a great buy. It was a big pack of stencils and I love this little flowered stencil. So I'm just putting some modeling paste that I've mixed with white stencil paint. And I am just putting a little bit of texture around the background using the stencil. So now I'm using some white gesso and I'm dulling down the color a little bit. And I love the color. I think the color is beautiful, but it's too bright. It's going to be competing way too much with even those really, really intense colors that are in the pattern papers that I'm using. So I just go around and put on a layer. And at first it looks like the color is totally covered up, but the color does seep through the gesso and 
it does end up not looking as light as it does when it's first applied. And you can see the difference on the inside if you look where the blue is on the right hand corner uh, or the right hand part of the circle you can see there's the more intense blue and there's a green next to it so you can see that this is helping to dull down the color a little bit. I've really loved participating in this challenge. I've participated in other challenges that had some kind of a prompt for each day for a month and I have loved all of them. I for some reason, my brain works in that way. I like the idea of every day for a month having some kind of a challenge, and it just really pushes me to create a lot of layouts. So I have never participated, though, in a challenge where there are sketches for each day, and I really love working with sketches, and I really like these sketches. There were one or two that stumped me for a little while, but that was part of the challenge, too. You know, some of them I knew what I was going to do as soon as I saw the sketch and others I had to kind of think about it and that was part of the fun. If you are not aware and you're interested there's a Facebook group called 30 Days of Sketches with Christie's Beautiful Life and there you can see what everyone else is doing and you also have access to all of the sketches from all seven series of 30 Days of Sketches. Now on my layout I'm adding some watered down white acrylic paint and I do tend to add a lot of white splatters. I just love them. And on this background, I feel like I can't really overdo it because the background is white. So I put a lot of white splatters and then just a couple of black splatters. And I really don't want to have too many of them because I love the color combination and like the light, airy spring colors. I don't want to add too much black. But you could see that there are some really dark areas in the photo. And I think that adding black splatters to the background will help uh, kind of draw the background in the photo together. So as I had mentioned, I don't have embellishments and I could have used other embellishments from other collections, but I really liked the images that were on these pattern papers. So I ended up really just using the fussy cut pieces for the embellishments. I was thinking that I really liked this color and I wanted there to be more of the blue color on the background so I decided that I was going to cut a little piece of this to or not a little piece but a piece of this to go over the pink banner not totally covered up I wanted you to be able to see the pink banner in the background but I wanted to add a little bit more blue you could see that the background was very heavy on the coral and the the pink colors and I felt that to make it a little bit more balanced I wanted to add a little bit more blue and I like the way that looks I think that that kind of achieve what I was hoping to achieve. And before I tuck those pieces in, I do add some of the black soot to the edges. And you can see that I still haven't glued the large cluster down, and that's just in case I want to put anything extra on the background. I tend to make those decisions uh, pretty frequently where I want to add something or I don't have enough of something, so I'm waiting till almost the very end to attach that down. I'm popping up the butterfly on some foam. That's something that I generally do to the butterflies on my layouts. And I fussy cut out that bird. I thought that was a good spot for it. It's like looking at the photo. So I liked that. And I'm also popping that up on some foam. You could see that I kept the embellishments, if we could call them those, or the, the fussy cut pieces. I kept them close to the photo. And I have a number of clusters that are around the photo and I feel that the darkest clusters form a triangle and draw your eye into the photograph. And I use the ATG adhesive on right on the back of that fun foam. Lately the ATG adhesive has been giving me some problems when I'm trying to put it on the back of the fun foam but it went just fine on this layout. So once again I'm playing around with all the elements that I'm going to put in the bottom right hand cluster. I was thinking of putting those little stamps in that cluster and then I thought instead I was going to cut out another banner. So I cut out a banner from that kind of I guess deep coral color and I'm just attaching that down layering it over the blue banner and I'm finally getting that whole cluster attached down to the layout. Trimming off some of the excess and I'm just putting a little bit more ink on the edge. 
So now finally, I am going to attach down my large cluster to the background using ATG adhesive for that and using quite a bit because the background has a lot of gesso on it and sometimes the ATG tape doesn't stick super well, but for the most part, I don't find that anything falls off. Just make sure, I just make sure that I put enough adhesive on the back. I'm putting some photo corners on my photo. I put one in each corner on this layout. And I'm again using that same coral color. I thought that that's a, a nice complement to the blue that's all around the photo. After I put down the photo corners, I am going to add my title, and the title is going to be Serene. I thought that was a great title for it. It was a very serene place that we went to, and we really had a very relaxing time. So I thought, yay, I can finally use one of these pre made titles, and it fits perfectly. So this is one of the few embellishments that I add that is not a fussy cut piece. I add those little puffy arrows and then I add some of the enamel dots. I add yellow ones all around the photo and then I add this orange color to the large banner and the small banners. And now I'm fussy cutting out another butterfly and I want to put that down in the bottom cluster. I wish I had one more butterfly uh, to make it three but I didn't, so I made made do with the two. I was happy for the two. I wish I wish more collections had lots and lots of butterflies. So I decided again I was going to pop up that little butterfly on some foam. I love the way they look popped up. Since I didn't end up using the stamps on the bottom cluster, I was thinking that I might want to put them on the main cluster. So I cut them in half, and I liked the way that looked on either side of the photo. On top of the banner. I found some more flowers to fussy cut so I am going to cut those out and I'm going to put those to the right of the butterfly but of course I have to ink the edges so that they look like everything else on the layout and that was the very last touch on this layout. Here are some close-ups. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope if you like this video you'll give it a thumbs up I hope that everybody has a fantastic day, and I hope you have a chance to do something fun and creative today, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.